Hi, I'm going to teach you a really cool trick and it's going to save you a ton of time. Um, it is when we have x, I want to show you right here, in an equilibrium expression, x that's next to a concentration and we can cancel it out. It's negligible. It doesn't change the final answer. How this is going to help you, it means it will take away the quadratic equation, which always takes a lot of time. So let's start with our example. This is the best way to teach this to you. And I'll end with your takeaway, when you will be able to cancel out the x. Okay, so here's our equation. We have one mole of iodine gas is going to produce two moles of this uh, 2i of the iodine gas. Uh, we start with an initial concentration of 0.45 and our equilibrium expression, uh, our constant, is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12. So just a really quick review. There are always three pieces of information when we're doing these problems. Initial concentration, equilibrium concentration, and the equilibrium constant. They gave us two of the three. The initial concentration and the equilibrium constant. So you and I are finding the equilibrium concentrations. The way we do that is with the ice table. So the initial concentrations, you start with, before any reaction, with a 0.45 reactant, so there's zero product, we change. So this reaction is going to go, it's going to go forward and then reverse, forward and reverse, finally until the forward rate equals the reverse rate. And when we hit that beautiful equilibrium, the concentrations are constant. Um, so we're going to lose an amount, oh, excuse me, I forgot to write one thing in here. We're going to lose an amount of the, um, of the reactant, and for every one mole that reacts, it's going to produce two moles of the product. So your easy takeaway on this, you use x for your unknown, and you take the coefficient and put that in front of the x. So one mole is consumed for every two moles that are produced. E, super easy, just add i plus c. We're going to get 0.45 minus x, there we go. Zero plus two x is two x. So let's go ahead and write this into our equilibrium expression. The generic formula, KC is going to be products, I squared, because of that two, I'm really careful with that, divided by reactant, which is just the I two to the one power. <clears throat> now we plug in everything we have. So our equilibrium constant, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12, equals my I is two X squared. Okay, so there's my two X that I plug in for the I, and it's squared, divided by the I two is 0.45 minus X. Okay. I took the time and I plugged all of this into the quadratic equation. If you're wondering how to do that, look under my equilibrium playlist and you can see um, the, the video to do the uh, quadratic equation. So I plugged into the quadra quadratic equation and x is 7.97 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, now watch this. There is a large difference between the magnitude of the equilibrium constant and the magnitude of the concentration. We are what? 11 zeros different. So in this example, what I did was the x next to a concentration. You can't cancel x if it's um, by itself, if it's just a number with x. You have a certain number of x's. But if you're adding or subtracting that concentration from a given concentration, let's watch that. I, I do that little circle to show that it's negligible. I remove that, um, and I'll tell you why in just a second. So then I plug this into my calculator. I solved for x, I multiplied both sides by 0.45, divided by four, took the square root, oh, and look at the answer. They are the same. x equals 7.94 times 10 to the minus seven. Why? Here it is, look at x x is teeny tiny. This is times 10 to the minus 7 magnitude. 0.45 minus 7.94 times 10 to the minus 7 is 4.44999999999. Um, that rounds to 0.45. This is so small that when you subtract it, it's as if it doesn't even change the concentration. That's why x is negligible. It's so small in comparison to that concentration, it doesn't change that concentration. Um, so I took my uh, x, 7.9 times 10 to the minus 7, went ahead and plugged it in. So I plugged this in, and like I said, it was 0.449999, whatever. Round it to sig figs, it's still 0.45. 
you subtract that tiny amount, it's as if it doesn't even change the concentration because it's so small in comparison. Um, then two times X, really small, 1.59 times 10 to the minus six. Now think about this with me for just a second. Our KC value, this equilibrium constant, super small, 10 to the minus 12. Now you and I know products over reactants, that is our K value. When I have a number less than one, that means that it is very reactant favored, okay? And check it out, it is. When we hit those equal rates, I have a huge amount of reactant compared to a tiny amount of product. This barely reacts. It hardly makes any product at all. Um, so these numbers totally fit with this. So everything said and done, here is your takeaway. When you look at your K value compared to the concentration, okay, so this is what you're comparing, the K value to the concentration that's next to the X. If there is a difference of two zeros, okay, a factor of two zeros, so this is a factor of 11 zeros. This would be 4.5 times 10 to the minus one, this is 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. We have, or 12, excuse me, there's 11 zeros difference. If you even have two zeros difference, this X, that value, when you solve for it, is going to be so small that when you subtract, it doesn't change the initial concentration. So here's the official takeaway. If 100 times K, so 100 times this, is still smaller than your initial concentration, that 0.45, then the X that's added or subtracted to a concentration is negligible. You cancel it out. You cancel it out. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I want to remind you, and really, really important to drive this home, I don't cancel out this X because it's not being added or subtracted to another uh, concentration. This is negligible because in comparison to the original concentration, when I subtract that small X, it doesn't change that original concentration um, for all intent and purpose. Okay, so this is what I tell my students. Really, the smallest molarities that we'll get are to 10 to the minus three, okay? 0 0.001 molar. That's really probably the smallest molarity that we're going to see. So if you have a K value that's less than or equal to a magnitude of 10 to the minus five, automatically, I tell my students, X is going to be negligible when it's next to a concentration. So again, if K is less than or equal to 10 to the minus five magnitude, then the X that's being added or subtracted to a concentration, that you cancel out is going to be negligible. You're looking for two zeros difference. Now, if you don't have a difference of two zeros, a magnitude of, of 100 difference, you're stuck doing the quadratic equation. You'll have to do the quadratic equation. For example, if I had like a um, 0 0.02 for my uh, concentration, and if K equaled one times 10 to the minus three, well, this would be 10 to the minus two, that's 10 to the minus three. I only have a factor of one zero, 10 difference. I'd have to do the quadratic equation on that. You have to have at least a difference of two zeros, again, between the K value and your concentration. And if you do, perfect. Whatever X is next to being added or subtracted from a concentration, cancel it out, count it as negligible because honestly, when you add or subtract that X from the concentration, it's so small, it won't change the concentration. This will save you a ton of time because you won't have to do the quadratic equation. All right, good work. Have a happy day. Thank you.